Hello, Alexei. How are you doing? How? Oh, hi, guys. So uh, I'm happy to join you to, you, to join you to join you event, and uh, in a few seconds I think I will share my screen with a presentation, and we will go to the deep learning with Kotlin DL. This new library are uh, developed uh, totally in Kotlin. So give me a few seconds to share screen. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it sounds quite interesting. Um, actually very keen to to learn about this as well to maybe implement some in my job so um yeah quite quite exciting i might I have some questions at the end so i will wait your question yes uh, i i i i don't want to inter to be interrupted during the session but at the end i will have a time to answer all your questions and uh, please uh guess uh, type attendees uh, please type your question in the chat i will answer so um did you see my screen, Ricardo? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all there. So, it's all good for you. So I'll leave you here. Great. For, yeah. uh, so, uh, cool. <laughs> Let's go. I think that uh, many of you know the Keras library, uh, which runs on the top of TensorFlow and know what is TensorFlow, heard uh, something about PyTorch, and etc. cetera. Uh, TensorFlow itself has a stable API, C API, uh, and uh, therefore, there are several uh, high-level deep learning uh, frameworks in other languages inspired by Keras, such as TensorFlow.js. Maybe somebody used it, this in the browser. Maybe Keras.net project. Maybe somebody heard this. Uh, TensorFlow in Go, it's used to uh, in Go ecosystem. And today, I want to introduce you to a Keras-like machine learning framework written in Kotlin. Um, currently, the Kotlin DL framework uh, can boast that this is the only way to construct and tra train complex neural networks on GVM, such as VGG, ResNet, and MobileNet. Uh, there is also support for transfer learning for the popular models trained in Keras, or maybe you know, available on the Keras.applications page. There are a lot of different. Um, models there, including exception, efficient net, and so on. And uh, we started a few weeks ago the implementation of different models for, for uh, computer vision from this page. Uh, for image preprocessing, uh, several functions are available that allow you to avoid complex and routine work on the GVM. For example, uh, maybe you don't know, but GVM has no one stable, good preprocessing library for images. There are a lot of them, different, maybe unfinished, and we uh, uh, we, we provided yet one based on the uh, low-level graphics 2D objects, a, uh, manipulations, like maybe famous uh, library image scalar. Uh, but now it's uh, abandoned and we couldn't use it uh, in the modern preprocessing. And this is, was the reason why we integrated a very minor model in our library for image preprocessing, because uh, doing it manually, it's too hard and painful. So finally, I'll show you how you can build, train, and use convolutional neural networks like CNN, maybe very different CNN architectures entirely in Kotlin, with the help of our framework. Uh, and we maybe we will touch um, in some points how to use Kotlin DL models in production now. So let me introduce myself. I'm a Java and Kotlin developer, Kotlin developer for the last two years. So uh, I'm started in this, um, this work like a distributed ML enthusiast, uh, started my work from uh, writing a um, special distributed ML model for the Apache Ignite uh, in-memory database open source uh, product. Uh, so uh, after that, I became a TensorFlow contributor. I started uh, my contribution to Java API of TensorFlow uh, for core TensorFlow and so on. After that, I joined to JetBrains as an, an ML engineer, but not as a researcher, but uh, like a framework writer. <laughs> uh, also, you could follow me on the GitHub, on the Twitter. Um, uh, you could uh, follow different projects related to my JetBrains activity or maybe uh, to the, my uh, patch activity, uh, all of them related to the uh, ML frameworks, different ML frameworks. So uh, I want to say a few uh, words about motivation why we started in JetBrains develop uh different tools for uh machine learning for data science etc 
uh, in last two years, Kotlin take, uh, took a course to become a convenient language uh, for data science. We started th from the uh, Let's Plot framework for visualization. After that, we wrapped uh, Py uh, Python library NumPy. Uh, but uh, it was a temporary solution. I mean that uh, at this time we decided to uh, remove the Python layer, uh, which uh, gives us a lot of overhead. And uh, now we are trying to uh, invent new library for multidimensional arrays in uh, Kotlin. I will talk about it later, uh, some words. So. Uh, no modern data science today without neural networks. Uh, I think you agree with me. All deep learning frameworks are good enough uh, at image recognition. And it, this is, was the reason why we started from this domain, not from audio preprocessing or maybe from uh, famous GANs. So uh, we started from the convolution neural networks because a lot of uh, tutorials uh, how to start from this. And it could be a first step for newcomers, for newbies who started in Kotlin, learning uh, maybe deep learning, maybe switches uh, with stable model um, uh from keras uh, to continue his experience with stable models provided by keras so uh training uh, transfer learning uh, and inference are now available for different scene architect architectures on kotlin with kotlin dl library and today i will provide some information about it so kotlin dl is a keras you could see on that uh, today like an keras framework but written in kotlin so keras in reality what is that this is a tensor flow c plus plus runtime plus low level uh, tensor api uh, plus python high level framework with layers and models but uh, for example a few years ago um it was very very teeny layer of python code uh, which wraps the low level c++ runtime uh, i mean uh, tensorflow uh, one uh, there will be a lot of different low level operators but then keras project we friends actually uh, joined to the google and it, it uh, was merged to the main co code repository uh, now we in many cases, things about TensorFlow uh, like about low level, um, relatively Keras, Keras API. So uh, we mm, remove the Python code, imagine we remove a Python code from here uh, and uh, rewrite a part of that in Kotlin DL. Not exactly the same, not every string. Uh, this is not the goal of our framework, but the uh, high level API is the same and some internals calculation is too close to the Keras and give the same results in many cases. So uh, perhaps, uh, uh, wrapping uh, Python is difficult and painful, and we reject this way. Uh, we has uh, we have such uh, ability in Java or in Kotlin to wrap the Keras framework, but uh, we had a painful experience with wrapping of NumPy, and we decided to start it from zero to here. So uh, from the very beginning, there was a low-level Java API in the TensorFlow main repository for inference, and it was our marketing like an API for inference only. But uh, uh, two years ago, I found very, very strange undocumented uh, classes, which uh, was in the repository and which gave uh, us ability to train simple models and not, sim not only simple models, but very complex models on the uh, Java API, a low level Java API. It was undocumented, it was uh, not published on the TensorFlow site. It was very strange, uh, but uh, it was the entry point for our uh, research and for our library now. So how it works? Uh, somewhere in the depths of TensorFlow, where is uh, a C API, as I said, and it's suitable uh, for generating bindings on the top of it for all the programming languages, including Java. Java, uh, Kotlin has a full inter interoperability with Java, and um, we could use the, all these classes which could be generated. Also, Java has a special technology which could help to call C functions on the Java side. It means uh, it's it famous like a GNI technology, and we can generate so called native methods in Java. 
So in our case, these methods were generated located in the main TensorFlow repository, and uh, it, it, it reduced our uh, it reduced our work on wrapping. So after that, you can already build a Java API of varying degrees of complexity, and sometimes this is done by hand. For example, I saw a lot of projects where uh, guys trying programming method by method, but there are a lot of I don't know a few hundreds of uh, low-level operands and uh, uh, TensorFlow API, and it's very difficult to wrap all of them in the uh, same manner. So uh, uh, in the case of Java API TensorFlow, hundreds of classes uh, for all sorts of operators were generated by a special C++ class. Now in the new version of Java API, it's rewritten with Java, but it was this C++ which generates uh, 4,000 4, classes in Java uh, in the same manner. So uh, in any case, this low-level API also comes with TensorFlow and is developed in close cooperation with Google, and uh, it's enough stable. So, and at the top of this level is the Kotlin Coda level, which provides the top-level top building blocks for creating and training neural networks, such as activation functions, weight initializer layers, optimizers, loss functions, and so on. And TensorFlow operators are used uh, to implement these building blocks. But in the future, uh, for Kotlin DL, it's planned to switch maybe on the PyTorch operators when uh, we will wrap the special part of our uh, PyTorch C++ front end with these operators. Or, for example, uh, uh, with uh, some of our um, alter, uh, with some other over with some guys from other teams, we are going to write some custom kernels implemented using using our multi-dimensional array library Maltic, uh, or maybe the uh, Nvidia libraries uh, like CUDA, JCUDA, and so on. Maybe it will be our own kernels. We don't know. We have a, a lot of experiments here, and the performance, uh, the final performance for us is not very critical at this moment, but I think that the future can be changed. So <laughs> the future, the possible future could be this, like on this slide. I'm sorry, I'm not a designer. <laughs> I create this picture <laughs> from the different rectangles, but the archi architecture in the future could be like on this slide. We could have the same keras like API and uh, bind with different uh, runtimes via Genie in Java, uh, with Onenix, with uh, PyTorch, with TensorFlow, or maybe with alternative libraries if the, they will have a C++ or C API. Maybe Jax from Google, from DeepMind will have this kind of API in future and we will wrap it too, why not? So, uh, I want to uh, say a few words about uh, our ecosystem for Kotlin for data science uh, because I, I want to invite you in our ecosystem. Uh, don't forget about Python, but try to taste some interesting things in, in Kotlin. So, first of all, uh, we released our Maltic, multi-dimensional array library for Kotlin. Uh, it has uh, Kotlin pure implementation and native implementation with open blast under the hood uh, and the, it could achieve the comparable performance uh, with numpy uh, the multi native uh, implementation i mean but for example the gvm uh, implementation on the pure kotlin uh, could be executed on android we are going to release support for android for multi dimensional race uh, during this year i think it will be available for different interesting things uh, uh, on the Android side, uh, and maybe in uh, in the future, in the future release, it will be. It, it became uh, uh, maybe you know the multi-platform library. It will be available, for example, on iOS, on the Android side, on the JavaScript, the same API, the special technology for Kotlin. You write on Kotlin, and it's available and compatible with different languages. So, but it's very experimental technology and I think it's too early to say uh, how it uh, will be in the next year for example also we have our bindings for the Apache spark project distributed for distributed training uh, so uh, it provides a Kotlin idiomatic API uh, type and dimensional safe for different uh, spark operations uh, so also this project adds a missing layer of compatibility between Kotlin and Apache Spark. Apache Spark has Python, Scala, Java, 
R API, but uh, the Kotlin uh, wrappers for Scala uh, looks ugly in in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Sorry, and the, it was the reason why uh, in the of the team the Pilot Filkich team wrote a wrapper and the diamatic Kotlin. So uh, also we had. Uh, a data frame library in progress. It's not the copy of Pandas library. Uh, it has special, uh, of course, Kotlin idiomatic API. Uh, you could do the same like in Pandas, maybe more Kotlin idiomatic way. So, uh, and also it includes uh, a few new operations which could be used uh, by users in different use cases. I think it will be released soon in uh, next or in next month possibly. So also at the end, at least but not uh, last but not least, let's plot library uh, for visualization. It's multi-platform and can be used not only with JVM, also supports JavaScript usage and Python usage. For example, you could uh, take this library to the Python ecosystem and use uh, in the uh, in the different Python libraries on this side. So uh, also. Um, it's, it's wonderful, but it works together in Jupyter Notebook. And not uh, Jupyter Notebook, if you know, supports different kernels for different languages. And now it's very, very interesting uh, to mix them together, not only in IntelliJ ADE, uh, but it supports the Kotlin kernel too, which, uh, which uh, is open source project uh, that brings Kotlin support to Jupyter Notebook. And uh, it has a lot of, um, pluses uh, for using with for strong typing languages with different auto completions and etc. and so on so on. Uh, please try uh, Kotlin uh, DL with uh, Jupyter Kotlin kernel with uh, Jupyter Notebooks. It's a very interesting experience. So. Uh, why was Keras taken as a sample, which is more and more often overshadowed by its competitor PyTorch? I will answer you. So the fact is that they developed in different ways and under the influence of different ideologies and interest groups, in my opinion. So while researching our potential audience in the Kotlin community, we came to the conclusion that we are closer to the ideology of working with neural networks offered by the Keras framework. What does it consist in? So the Keras API philosophy from the last words uh, of the Francois Cholet, creator of Keras, progressive disclosure of complexity. Progressive disclosure from the Wikipedia definition is an interaction design pattern often used for making application easier to learn and less error prone. Uh, imagine uh, Mac OS uh, UX. It does that by differing some advanced or uh, rarely used features to a secondary screen. You should start from the very limited set of features and go deeper step by step. So, um, I stole this slide from the Francois Chalet presentation. Sorry, Francois. Uh, uh, what ordinary users want? Those users who are not deeply immersed in the ma mathematical foundations of deep learning. I thought about that a lot. But who want to use uh, its capabilities on a regular basis, maybe developing the backend and mobile applications? I, I think it's uh, maybe not ordinary users, but uh, engineers, practitioners, and etc. But uh, what we want, we asked our audience, they wanted uh, best practices back it in by default. For example, best initial errors, best activation functions, and so on. Don't think about that. Don't use the hyperparameter tuning. Uh, they want as little code as possible. They want uh, easy logging. They want clear explanation exception. For example, <laughs> from my experience, then I started uh, my, my work with TensorFlow low-level exceptions. It was very, very, very strange text in all of them. You uh, really couldn't understand what's happened. There are something with shape, something with tensor, something strange with uh, C++ API. And uh, we are trying to replace this strange exception parts, part of them uh, to create very clear explanation. What's happened? Uh, then you compile your model. What's happened? Uh, then you're trying to fit. Maybe make some tips for the users. What could, what should be improved in his model uh, to get uh, better results, and etc. I think uh, a few tips could be uh, taken from the Andrew Carpati uh, tips how to train neural networks and it, it could be very useful for starters for newbies uh, in deploying. Also, uh, 
Kotlin DL contains a lot of examples, I think, for all use cases, which is possible with this library. Uh, and you could easily copy paste to your project and start. So, uh, L users with advanced engineering skills uh, whose destiny is to roll models into hot productions like a hot potatoes prepares an infrastructure for experiments and quickly tune ready-made models to see their needs what do they need I, I thought a lot about that too and uh, we uh, explored our audience here and asked a lot of questions and engineers answered that they wanted flexible model architecture, a lot of building blocks, uh, blocks which could be easily joined together, uh, flexible training logics which uh, should be hidden from the uh, practitioner, transfer learning of course because they don't want to train uh, the models from zero to hero uh, from scratch, Yeah, but take the ready model and maybe retrain the last layer, uh, the last dense layer with a few neurons uh, to, to, to fine tune uh, the model loaded from example from the Keras applications. They wanted transfer learning, of course, and uh, different export and import for ML ops needs to different systems like ML ops, for example. Oh, oh I'm sorry, to M as ML flow, for example. Uh, but what about researchers who are giving birth to the new models? Mm -hmm. We have a double trouble with researchers. They don't want a framework in our uh, in our research for researchers. They don't want a framework. We want just a toolbox with low level control of every detail. Uh, they want a custom gradient loop and be able to add new components on the fly. And um, on the start of development of our framework, we need to decide for what audience uh, is the main for us. And we decided that we will work first of all with uh, basic users and with uh, practitioner engineers, but not with the researchers because uh, we are using uh, run times from PyTorch, for example, from TensorFlow, and uh, we need uh, a time to adapt new technologies, new neural network architecture, and so on. Uh, and what opportunities does Kotlin DL give now? I would say that it's more focused on the basic users, uh, users, as I said, and in the next releases, we will make Kotlin DL more open, I think. It will be possible to add your own custom components, such as an activation functions. It's very, uh, very small uh, component, loss functions maybe, layers, optimizers, and initializers. But uh, I'm not sure that we will, um, delegate the full control on the training cycle, like in PyTorch uh, or, different new modern frameworks for researchers but for now you can send us a pull request for example and new developments uh, will be included in the next release i i promise you every layer every every new initializer and maybe every new optimizer but it is it, it's hard to add new optimizer optimizer now because we are limited by the tensorflow runtime so um as i said Mm, if we will if we look at the model training from simple to arbitrary flexible uh, at the current moment uh, Kotlin DL provides the model fit method uh, for quick experiments and provide callbacks. Uh, I know that, uh, for example, in PyTorch Lighting or in Catalyst Framework, it's now the time for adding the callbacks because uh, PyTorch has uh, very, very strange experience. Uh, basic PyTorch has very, very strange um, experience with uh, callbacks. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Maybe it's not included in PyTorch now. Uh, I mean, basic PyTorch, but it's available on the high level frameworks, uh, which was inspired by Keras, maybe. I, I'm not sure about PyTorch Lite. By torch lighting. So, um, also, if you are a researcher and you want to be experienced researcher uh, written in Java or in Kotlin, if you need a low level manipulation on JVM, you could use a Java API for 1.x or 2.x TensorFlow runtimes. But I have one note for you Java API for 1.15 uh, is stable and fast, and we are based on this runtime. Uh, it doesn't influence on uh, on interoperability with modern keras we could load model model from modern keras from model tensorflow but we are using a uh, previous runtime because it's faster in many cases uh, but java api for 2.x is under development and has a few performance issues related to the garbage collection uh, but it's ready for experiments and i think all models will work but maybe you will take a few memory leaks don't use it in production yet uh, 
there are a few useful links here on the slide and you could find here a few of my articles about how to write uh, for example Lenet 5 on the low level operands it's close to your experience how to write it's the same on the Python but the naming uh, is uh, bigger <laughs> with this so uh, let's talk about Kotlin DL features I, I told a lot about ideology you know about ecosystem but let's go to the features it's very 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 short list so uh, the previous release uh, Alpha release uh, supported a uh, sequential API. It's very, very simple API. You stack layers uh, in one line. So, and you can build only VGG like sequential models like VGG 16, like VGG 19. So, it could be exported from Keras. Uh, you could download these models. The, 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 with their weights uh, and uh, make transfer learning on your site, for example. Also, uh, previous release supported training on TensorFlow, for example, for classification and regression, simple models, and for VGG-like models too. But no interesting residual connections and, and et cetera, and et cetera. But the upcoming release uh, will bring to us um, I said upcoming because the alpha version is available on Maven Central today but uh, i think that the stable version for it will be available in the next two weeks so the upcoming release will bring to us uh, at once several significant groups of features on board and i'll start with the first and most important one the so-called zoo of models uh, is available which includes a special loader of configs and model weights for each of uh, which the original data pre-processing is available um, Apply during training on the ImageNet data set. Uh, uh, it's very different. For example, MobileNet uh, trained with one type of preprocessing, uh, ImageNet, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, ResNet version one with alternative type of preprocessing. And all of them are available in Keras applications model. And uh, we, mm, mo we moved the same. We, we wrote the same pre-processing on the Kotlin side too, because it's very important to pre-process uh, new data for transfer learning, for example, in the same manner. So uh, the next uh, new things, uh, the addition of new layers, which are, are required for building ResNet architecture, mobile net architecture, it's batch norm, activation layer, deep files and several convolutions, uh, different merge layer to merge you different branches in the model, uh, all uh, seven of them, which are available in Keras. Uh, it's global average uh, pooling, uh, the new replacement for the last dense layers, uh, cropping 2D, reshape, and zero padding 2D. Uh, it's not exactly all the layers which will be available uh, in the final version of uh, uh, zero. Do two release, but I think the most of them. So also it includes embedded data sets which are located on the our servers, but it could be downloadable via uh, different simple functions like MNIST, Fashion MNIST, uh, Safar 10, and famous maybe somebody remember dogs versus cats uh, image data set from Kaggle. I started from the from this data set a few years ago, my way in deep learning. I think it's very interesting uh, to um, uh, retrain your last layers in your model with a uh, few images uh, from this data set. For example, if the per train model was trained on the image net i think that uh, cat and dogs are compatible from the with the image net uh, images so uh, also uh, the next group of features it's uh, as i said the image preprocessing we have a special kotlin dsl for image preprocessing with supporting of crop precise rotate load from the uh, directory and saving to directory operators also rescale it's it's very important um, operation too and for example the basic augmentation we have no aug augmentation library uh, in support yet but the basic augmentation could be realized easily with our dsl manually for example for your needs if you need augmentation for training on the real huge data sets also 
uh, we have our different data sets. The reason that traditional way to run data through the narrow network uh, in forward mode is to load batches one by one into RAM and then into the memory area controlled by, for example, by the TensorFlow computational graph. We support this approach with um, on the fly data set, on fly data set. Uh, he sequentially, during one training epoch, loads batch after batch into RAM, applying the pre-processing described in advance if it was defined. For example, you could miss the step. But if our data fit into RAM, for example, we have 100 gigabytes of RAM or one terabyte, let them load and keep all this data in RAM. Why not? Without reading it over and over from disk, uh, it's like a caching into your RAM memory. For example, on heap data set is your choice for this use case. Um, uh, so, of course, uh, like uh, all new frameworks, it has a few limitations. Now it's useful for image recognition task and regression ML only. For example, you couldn't train uh, task from speech recognition domain, for example, or maybe new cool modern style, ga style GANs. But uh, I think it's in future it will be available too. Um, limited number it has limited number number of layers and um, at this moment it has no android support sorry if you joined this meeting uh thinking that this is a kotlin for android and you think it uh, about uh, this to this moment it's kotlin for backends <laughs> by our uh, polls uh, uh one third of users used uh, kotlin for backends but i think that at the end of this year, we will provide a few wrappers for uh, working and maybe training uh, for TF Lite format. You know, this is special, a highly optimized format uh, for TensorFlow and not only TensorFlow models on the mobile devices. Uh, and maybe uh, if PyTorch uh, will improve his own uh, mobile formats, we will wrap it too in the after after working with TF Lite. So uh, Kotlin Dell roadmap, I uh, highlighted a few moments from this, but uh, especially I need to say that in the following releases, uh, we will add uh, new models to the model zoo, Inception, very famous model, dense net, not so famous, efficient net, and maybe if the Keras framework will provide in applications efficient net version two, or maybe uh, new, NF nets without batch normalization. We will uh, we will uh, add this model in our model zoo too. Also, uh, I'm going to add a special tunable GPU settings because now uh, it's it's very hard to uh, tune the fraction of occupied GPU memory, for example, in Kotlin DL. Uh, also, uh, a few missed things in our framework, it's a regularization for all layers. Uh, sometimes it's very, very interesting techniques which could improve your experience with neural networks. Uh, new metrics will be added. Uh, also, as I said, uh, um, conversion to the flight format uh, in Kotlin, not in Python, like now. Also, we are going to integrate uh, on Nix uh, and PyTorch runtimes also. Um, maybe, maybe. If uh, you're interested in it, you if you know, for example, Kotlin, very good, or Java, uh, we will have a separate project, a separate model in our project to create uh, different ML, classical ML algorithms like decision trees, linear regression, etc. in Kotlin. And you could join us uh, to add more new algorithms when uh, basic interfaces will provide it uh, after a few months experiments. So is it time for demo? I have not so many time, but I want to share uh, my IDE to run a few simple models uh, because I want to demonstrate to you how it could be written in Kotlin. So give me a second to share my IDE. <laughs> So I hope you see my screen. Uh, just a second to check. Yeah, uh, I see that you see my screen. So here we in the simple project, which named Kotlin DL DMO, it's available on GitHub too. I will share links uh, in the presentation uh, for the organizers and they will share review. Uh, so uh, here we see here the simple iris data set. Maybe do you remember three classes, simple classification task, four features. 
for features for every of that. And we could build very, very, very simple uh, neural network input, a layer with four neurons because uh, we have four features, huge dense layers with 200 neurons, uh, activation function, kernel initializer, bias initializer, and the final dense layer of the free neurons because we have free classes. Uh, this is the model description in Kotlin. So here we sh need to uh, shuffle our data prepared in uh, just an array. So, and create the on heap data set because it's very, very small, <laughs> tiny data. So we need to split data set to validate on the tests uh, subset. And we could um, go deeper with our model. All these steps may be familiar uh, to you. If you have experience with, Kot or with Keras, uh, you need to compile the model to compile the underlying uh, TensorFlow graph. You need to set up the optimizer, loss function, and metric. I will prefer accuracy metric for classification tasks. After that, we could print the summary of our model or layers. I will run. I will run model to check this. And uh, we could start uh, the training. We are calling the feed method, where we could pass the link on the train data set, the number of epochs, the uh, size of batch. And we could evaluate our model on the test subset uh, and calculate accuracy. The final accuracy is enough high, but if we will uh, revisit our model, we will see a lot of neurons. I think it was uh, learn all uh, training examples here, but don't worry about that. Uh, this is a logging. I use a uh, standard Java logging for this model. This is, a, uh, for example, log4j logging. Describe it with XML file. You remember this technology? This is that. <laughs> so uh, this is simple console output. It could be outputted to the file, for example, to the database if you want, and etc. We have three simple layers. Uh, we have a uh, number of parameters. Uh, so different stats about uh, batches, about our epochs. It uh, prints the stats not like the Keras. You remember this uh, special line. We change from second to the second, but uh, we work on it. <laughs> so this is, the next example is uh, the training, the simple Lynette. The difference is in the model description here. So uh, if we will go to the training model, it's the same. We compile the model with alternative optimizer where we clip in gradients by the value. There's the same loss, there's the same metrics, and the same code of training. Uh, I think uh, that we could imagine the uh, easy method uh, then after definition of model, we could call only one method, train with default settings. Um, so the model definition is the following. We define the input. To define the input uh, shape of our data uh, on MNIST data set. For MNIST data set, we call the special function MNIST, uh, which loads uh, the MNIST data set for us and put is in the special uh, cache folder on our disk uh, and the special subset, you could replace this path uh, to your custom path if you need. But uh, by default, it will be downloaded to the cache data set NIST and all the famous images uh, in the U-byte format will be loaded here, uh, will be located here. So uh, also the Lynette has convolutional layers, max pooling layers, uh, again, convolutional, max pooling, flatten layers, and dense. No new things. I think should be very, very familiar. Maybe, I don't know, the formatting of code is different. Maybe uh, from the Python experience and for, from your Java experience. But the difference is the strong types. For example, you could go to all these variables has types, have types, and all are building block have types and it's very easy to program. Also, as you know, the IntelliJ IDEA has auto completion. It's very easy to um, uh, code these models, these model definitions. So uh, also uh, we will go to the production ready example with our ResNet uh, 50 model. It could be loaded from the model zoo. 
uh, located in the, the same directory cache slash portraying models. Uh, you could choose the model type, which should be downloaded. For example, you could download it VGG 16 or mobile net version two if you want, but we will stay with ResNet 50. Uh, it loads uh, the config, the configuration of the model, uh, the definition of the model in JSON format. Uh, for example, you could find it here. This is model JSON config. This is a totally careless description of the model. And uh, we support this format uh, because in future we want to be able to train our models, for example, in Kotlin DL, allow them to Keras if you want. Um, so also the weights in uh, H5 format are loaded too. And you could compile your model with any way losses because it doesn't influence uh, in our prediction and preprocess uh, the data with special preprocessing DSL, preprocessing pipeline. We need to define loading from the um, resources directory. Here are a few photos. For example, this is me, uh, but younger in two years. And a few images, pigeon, cat, Broccoli? No, no, tree. I don't know. Car, uh, strange, uh, strange fish, which reminds me nipple. Sorry, uh, brown beer and really uh, goldfish. Really goldfish, uh, like on the sixth page. Uh, let's see uh, what will be predicted uh, by ResNet fifty. The top five labels uh, will be printed. So this is a lot of loading h5 sets it's the bug messages it could be disabled of course by our settings but uh, let's check on the first image with young me it, it, it was found jersey lab coat tube hand blower sunglasses okay but not the real man uh okay so Petrich, veteros okay it's close to the pigeon i'm not sure about real uh type of this uh animal Egyptian cat, exactly the same. Uh, it's a Egyptian cat, sports car, broccoli, <laughs> not real, uh, not real uh, tree. Agree, this tree reminds me of broccoli too. Goldfish was found on this sixth image and uh, brown beer and goldfish on the last image uh, with different um, degree uh, of accuracy, but was found too. So, but if you want to uh, transfer really transfer learning, not only for prediction, but if you want to retrain uh, something, uh, you could uh, try to get the initial model, for example, to load it uh, from the model zoo, describe uh, the pre-processing. For example, I want, uh, in this sample, I want to um, retrain the last year, la last layer, uh, on the cat dogs uh, small data set, uh, only 1000 images per class uh, in this data set, the subset of uh, the whole cat dogs uh, images data set. And I want to resize all of these images because they have very different sizes to the input of our neural network of ResNet uh, 50. And after that, I want to remove last layers. This is a code uh, to remove last layers. We need to remove uh, layer and uh, remove all uh, boundary lines with previous layers here. And we could add in functional API manner uh, new two dense layers, for example, with name top dense and prediction, uh, and create the functional model from the last layer. It's close to the Keras uh, functional API, but we don't need in input here because it will be found automatically. Uh, so uh, we will compile the new model with uh, optimizer losses metrics like in the previous examples and we could load weights only for the frozen layers uh, of the previous layers for example uh, all of them will, were frozen by default uh, and only two last uh, dense layers uh, will be retrained from the uh, random initialization uh, and uh, please uh, look at the screen just a few seconds and we will check, we will evaluate new model uh, before, we will evaluate it before training, accuracy before training 
only uh, 42 percent but after our training it will achieve more higher accuracy just a few seconds oh okay yeah, it will achieve yeah. oh sorry yeah the time yeah so we're finished. running a little bit of time yeah so uh, but it's quite yeah. good yeah uh, it, it, was, it was quite exciting i think uh, it was 90 percent accurate 98 nice Nice. Um, okay, okay, okay. We'll show only last slide if you give me a second. Only last slide with links. <laughs> but yeah, uh, is yeah. it, as I understand, we have no time to answer the question, or we will have time. Uh, no, I think we we are running out of time. But you they, you still can uh, post questions in the comments, and you can respond uh, right there. In okay. The okay. Comments. Okay. Just a second to share. Uh, to share yeah. screen. Yeah, I will take more time then. <laughs> Um, decided before. Uh, sorry for that, guys. It's fine. No worries. Yeah, yeah just a few useful links. Or uh, I want to say a few last words. Please follow us on the GitHub. Uh, start this project. Support us. Uh, if, if you want, you can uh, search all of the uh, our uh, Kotlin data science ecosystem. You could join our Kotlin Slack uh, to the deep learning or uh, Kotlin DL channels. There are a lot of different mathematics channels there. Join all of them. Uh, join our discussion on GitHub and follow me. I will post new news about that on Kotlin for Data or on Zalislav Twitter. Uh, Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. And we'll wait yeah. attention layers in Kotlin DL. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you, Alexi. Thank you. Thank it was, you. Uh, quite, yeah, quite good. Okay. I will answer yeah. in chat. You guys, thank you for your question. We'll go to the chat.